What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Savannah and we are back with some more Planet Zoo. I don't remember honestly the last time that I uploaded two speed builds in a row. That just kind of proves and shows my excitement for this pack. But today we are building for the Fennec Foxes. So this is another one-off habitat build. If you missed it for the launch of the new Africa pack, the DLC that came came out yesterday, we released a one-off build for the meerkats, and this one is going to be for the fennec fox. So this is not part of any current project that we have going on right now. This is just a one-off build because I was that excited about all the pieces, and I really didn't have a zoo project that I could fit something as stylized and as themed as I wanted to build. So I just opened up a brand new map and I started building, like the most daunting task that you you can do in Planet Zoo is, is open up a, a blank map and look at that big, vast, flat expanse of grass. Uh, but with this pack, I was so excited it didn't make a difference. I just started building and the ideas came and I've had so much fun this last week. Uh, before we get started, I do want to thank again Frontier, of course, for giving me early access to the pack and for supporting the channel in the way that they have. I have so much fun playing with these new pieces. I have uh, a few more more builds in the works right now and really am aiming for almost daily content this week. Um, I have a second episode of our Sims Let's Play coming out and if you haven't caught that, I do highly recommend it. It's something I'm having a ton of fun with um, and a newer game that I'm trying to bring to the channel. So if you haven't checked that out, I do recommend it. But in today's build, we, like I said, are building for the Fennec Fox and this is actually the first First, no, that's a lie. This is the second thing I built after getting access to the pack. The build that you saw yesterday was actually the very last thing I built before release um, out of four different habitats. So this one I built for Frontier specifically. I was lucky enough to be asked to build a habitat to show off the Fennec Fox. And I got to pick the animal that I built for excluding a couple because when I got to pick the, the meerkat and the scarab beetle were already picked uh, so I couldn't build for them so I picked the fennec fox because these guys honestly are probably my favorite in the pack just wait until you get those uh, end cinematics at the end of this video I mean I I honestly don't think they could be any cuter. They're so, they captured how fuzzy they are and how soft they are and they have these huge massive ears and their little noses and face, oh my goodness. They are so adorable. I am absolutely obsessed with them. So I was super, super excited to be able to build a habitat to show them off. And what I wanted to do, like I said, this was for the stream that Frontier uh, did showing off for the launch of the pack yesterday morning. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to create something that was more honestly along the lines of like a theme park build, something that was going to be really stylized, something where I could build and just show off as many of the new pieces as I possibly could with, of course, lots and lots of plaster because <laughs> that is the theme of this pack. I have already decided it's the plaster pack um, and it didn't I like I said, I didn't have any project that this would really fit in. The other thing that I wanted to do with this specific build is that the fennec foxes and the meerkats both, and the African penguins for that matter, they're small animals. And in game, they are very small animals. And I think it's absolutely fantastic that they're such small animals, but that means that if you build too big for them, they look microscopic. Like they get lost in habitats so easy. So I wanted to build something that was going to be like just on the boundary of what they would actually need. And I believe this build does come out to be just slightly too small. However, it's very easily expandable. So if you are wanting to download this off the workshop, yes, I didn't forget this one's on the workshop, mostly because I had to put it on the workshop so that Frontier could get it. But I put something on the workshop nonetheless. So if you do want to download it. The link to my workshop is down in the description below. Go ahead and download it and have fun. So you can easily expand this is my point. Um, if you do want to play in, you know, in franchise or something like that or play with animal welfare on, you're welcome to do that. Um, but I wanted to build something that 
Looks like maybe it could fit within a real zoo, but something that was really stylized, really themed. So this would be like a really over budget zoo uh, or just a really over the top zoo is really what I was going for because I wanted it, like I said, I wanted to be able to use all these awesome stylized pieces that really wouldn't fit well within like a realistic habitat, I guess. And of course, we always say realistic on the channel as in quotation marks, right? Because it's a video game. There are certain um, uh, creative liberties we're going to take to make sure that it works in game or that it looks, you know, looks nice and doesn't look too boring, right? Because we want to go over the top whenever we can. Um, but I'm really, really happy with how this came out. I was working with a specific reference picture that was this really cool, like, um, it was like an adobe structure building, um, but it had this really pretty door. And you'll see here, as I'm working on the door, I, I start and I grab some art shapes and I sit down and I think to myself, I'm gonna be ambitious. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the hours and I'm gonna make this really intricate design on this door because the reference picture that I was looking at had a beautifully intricate, uh, intricately done design on the door. I was gonna copy it. I was I was like all set and ready to go. I was determined. Um, and then I I think you guys I put down maybe like five art shape pieces. <laughs> you guys can count when I get to the art shape pieces towards the end. I think I get to five of them and I quickly changed my mind. I, I yeah, I got over it that fast. I, uh, I then remembered that we got these really wonderful tile pieces that have these intricate, here we go. I bring out the art pieces now. You can see there's one, Okay, two, so the two triangles, and then I think I border it with some art shapes. So that's two, three, four, five, six. I put down six art shape pieces and then go, yeah, not for me. Thanks though. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so I end up using the beautiful tile pieces that we got in the pack that they already have this intricate design on them and they're all recolorable. Uh, every single color on the tiles is recolorable and I am such a fan of that. So fantastic that so many of these pieces are flexi colored. Here you go, I bring out these tiles. See, that's where I go, yeah, nope, thanks, next. Uh, and bring out these tiles and recolor them to match what I wanted to do. And I think it turns out great. Um, it achieves the look that I was going for. It does not obviously match the reference picture that I was looking at exactly, but it's close enough and, and we get the feeling. These are supposed to be like the doors of whatever building. It's it's not really a temple. Oh, it you know, it might have been. I need to do a better job at actually looking at what the reference pictures are that I'm, that I'm looking at um, and figuring out what they actually are. I just did a lot, a lot of searching for North African architecture, but I was really torn um, with the fennec foxes, their range is primarily in North Africa, but goes into parts of uh, Egypt as well. And I was thinking of possibly doing something kind of Egyptian feeling for them um, because they're in, you know, parts of Egypt and uh, Arabia and, and things like that. But then I ended up with this because when I was looking for North African architecture, I just loved this reference picture so much that I ended up using um, and felt that it kind of fit uh, for making like a small habitat. Another thing that I was taking into consideration was the fact that I was building this specifically to be a workshop item. I get asked so much why more of my stuff is not on the workshop and to be honest, because it's kind of a pain to take something that is playable in game that I've built and make it easy for somebody or anybody for that matter to place down in their own zoo. Things like sinking the trees down into the ground, sinking the rocks down into the ground. If they're sunk down too far, the habitat, the border that I put around it, will not recognize it. Therefore, when you drop it down as a blueprint, it doesn't transfer over. And therefore you have to take certain considerations into mind when building something specifically for a blueprint build 
and so the reason I did this is because I was gonna have to give it to Frontier and I knew I was going to have to. So I went through and I think it probably took me an hour. I surrounded it in a barrier and then kept placing it down in my own zoo and seeing what disappeared, what need to be adjusted, what didn't transfer over right, going back, adjusting that, updating the blueprint, setting it down again, so on and so forth, over and over and over again until the way that it was going to appear when you plop it down as a blueprint was going to be uh, like I intended it to be. And it's just, it's very time consuming and you are limited to certain things. Like if I wanted to um, utilize a full size tree, like let's take the Brazil nut trees, right? And use those as bushes. If I sink those all the way down in the ground, those will be way too far down that the blueprint won't register them and they wouldn't show up when you copy and pasted your build. So that being said, this is on the workshop and it is all, I almost said calibrated. Uh, that's not the right word. It's all built so that you can just easily place this down and use it in your zoos. Um, but that's really why more of my stuff isn't on the workshop as just blueprints. Um, I do have some zoo files on there because zoo files are different. Zoo files are just take the entire file, put that up there for somebody else to download and you can go into the zoo exactly how it was, how the player had it before. Um, and that's exactly how I'll be uploading some of my projects coming uh, here very soon is uh, River Rock Zoo and probably Probably, honestly, you guys, Hakea Wildlife Park. Um, I'm ready to wrap those two up. I have big plans for a brand new zoo project that is a very specific project, uh, one that I am doing a lot of planning for before we get started, um, which is abnormal for me, very abnormal for me. Uh, normally I just kind of go with the flow, find a reference picture and then, you know, go from there. But I really am doing a lot of planning for this one because I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so I'm excited to bring that to you guys. I'm hoping to have the first episode by maybe next week or so. Um, but I have so many ideas right now with the new pack. The inspiration is a flow in. I am having so much fun um, that I really don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I do work in an educational facility using animal ambassadors to help teach humane education. Um, and what that means for me is that the summertime is the absolute busiest, uh, especially right now with COVID lockdowns being released. We do have kids back at our summer camp. Um, and that means long hours for me and lots and lots of hard work out in the sun, specifically outside. Um, and so I'm much more tired when I come home at the end of the day. So I'm less inclined to spend hours upon hours on my computer uh, because I need that relaxing time. I, I need to, uh, to not, you know, I need to survive the summer, let's just say. <laughs> I need to be able to recuperate and, uh, and take some time to relax myself. However, this week I'm really, really pushing myself because I am that excited about this pack. This whole last week, I really have not done much else besides go to work and come home and play on the computer and just have been enjoying it so, so much, um, so much. That brings me to what you guys I'm sure are waiting for because you can see it in the title. I do have some keys to give away. So specifically, I have um, two Africa Pack DLC codes that we'll be giving away on this video today. I do have a few more, but those will be over on either my Instagram or my Twitter. So if you're interested in winning the Africa pack, um, I'll give you some directions on how to win it at the end of this video. But if you don't win or want another chance or multiple chances, do make sure to follow me on both Twitter and Instagram because I'll be giving packs away over there as well. Links are down in the description to all my social medias, my Twitter, Twitter, my Instagram, and my Discord. So do make sure you follow me on all those spaces. Keep up with everything that I'm doing because I do have much more Planet Zoo content planned. Um, we have things like Let's Build a Zoo. We covered that. I'm waiting for that full release, which I'm crossing my fingers that will be very soon. Um, I'm following the development of another little zoo game that's very like Zoo Tycoon feeling. It's called Simply Zoo, and I don't think the name could match the channel any better. So we'll be covering that. Um, Jurassic World evolution was obviously announced and I will 100% be diving into that when it comes. Although we are kind of sort of expecting a holiday like December time, 
maybe if we are lucky November um, but that's only six months away so you know expecting that on the channel as well as prehistoric kingdom whenever we do eventually get to some sort of beta or um, you know long time down the road I feel full release for that so that is what we have got coming to the channel and then like I mentioned before we are covering sims more and more because that's a game near and dear to my heart that I just have fun playing so if you do enjoy some sims come content, I almost said comment, uh, do enjoy some Sims content, uh, you can find that on the channel as well. Um, that was a tangent. I apologize. That was, <laughs> it was not meant to be such a tangent. My point in telling you that is that you can keep up with everything that I'm doing on the channel, uh, but also have a chance to win some Africa Pack DLC codes. I was lucky enough to be given some codes by Frontier, um, and I just want to share this pack with you guys because I really honestly have not been this excited about a pack since the aquatic pack. The aquatic pack had me very excited because of all the pieces um, that they had in game. Even though there was much less than this pack, there were some pretty good, useful pieces. And I even said it today. I said it out loud. Well, I said it, um, I believe, in, in Drew's stream earlier. The uh, African pack has beat out the Australian pack for me. I used to say over and over again that the Australia pack was my favorite DLC that Planet Zoo has come out with. That's no longer. I am fully on board. Africa pack is my new favorite pack. And that's saying a lot because I love the Australia pack. I love the pieces that came in that one. It The aesthetic fits my aesthetic perfectly. Um, just things that I like personally. But the Africa pack with all of its flexi color. And how often do I use the plaster, you guys? I mean, I use the plaster pieces um, a whole lot in my build. So the fact that we have even more, like something that just builds upon a wall set that we already have, I think is absolutely fantastic. And just, I mean, a huge thing, and it, it might seem super small, but the fact that most of this is flexi colored is just, I mean, honestly, that tops it. That just makes it the best pack because it makes things so incredibly customizable. Um, you can just take one piece and it can be a thousand different things because you can change the color and you can make it fit to your build however you want. So I just think it's awesome. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So before we end this video, of course, of course, I want to talk about our little Fennec Fox friends, right? Because they are just the cutest things and I absolutely, absolutely love them. And I know I say that about basically every animal, but you know, what can I say? I, I basically love every animal. So let's get to talking about them. I've got some information in front of me. Let's see what they're all about. So while it is the smallest fox in the world, the Fennec Fox possesses tons of cuteness and charm. <laughs> That's the very first sentence on San Diego Zoo's website. Um, so that just kind of tells you how cute and how charming they actually are. With their most notable characteristic being their very large ears, they're always a favorite. These pint-sized canids are extremely adaptable in their native desert environment. The Fenix are most recognizable by their large ears reaching four to six inches in length. Those ears not only help them listen for prey underground, but also serve to dissipate excessive heat of the desert. So this is an adaptation used by a lot of different desert animals. Um, ears are very vascular, so they have a lot of veins that run through them. They also, in comparison to the body, are not covered in super thick hair so it allows heat to escape the ears so when the blood is pumping through the body the the warm blood goes out into the ears and then the cooler blood can go back into the body and it helps regulate their body temperatures um, this is something that rabbits do as well um, with those big ears with not a not a whole lot of fur or hair um, so really common adaptation for desert uh, mammals specifically to have they have thick sandy colored coats that help keep them warm at night and reflect the sun during the day. They even have fur on their feet to protect the foot pads from the scorching ground. We just talked about foot pads in my uh, 
not yesterday's, but uh, before that, the Snow Leopard Speed build because they have padded fur on their feet, uh, on their feet, on their feet, uh, because they want to protect themselves from the snow and the cold. These guys have it to protect them from the scorching sand on the ground. So as we mentioned, fennec foxes live in deserts and semi-desert habitats. The home range of these foxes is widespread through the deserts of the Sahara and through North Africa. They burrow into sand dunes during the day to avoid the extreme heat. These cool dens can be up to three feet deep. Although considered to be solitary, fennec foxes live in small communities of around 10 individuals with dens being close in proximity or in some cases connected to one another. Um, so this is similar to the meerkats that we were talking about yesterday and um, keeps them cool by going underground because the temperature is much more constant underground, protects them from really hot temperatures and really cold temperatures. So a good way, again, to regulate body temperature. Obviously, it's a huge problem when you are a desert animal is making sure that you don't overheat or get too cold. Um, so that's why a lot of these desert animals have all these adaptations in order to survive the harsh climate. Because as humans, we would not survive in this harsh climate. We would just cook. <laughs> At least I would just cook. <laughs> Fennec foxes are mostly nocturnal animals. They spend most of the day in an underground burrow avoiding the desert heat. They emerge from their dens at dusk to begin to search for food. Again, not uncommon for desert animals to be either nocturnal um, or crepuscular. Crepuscular means that they are active during dawn and dusk, so the early morning or late hours of the evening. Um, so again, not uncommon for a desert animal because that's when the sun is not like beaming down at its brightest um, on the uh, habitat. These foxes are omnivores, feasting on a variety of prey as nighttime hunters. They enjoy insects, rodents, snails, lizards, plants, fruits, roots, and eggs. Their large ears provide impeccable hearing to locate their prey. Being desert dwellers, they have adapted to living with a very little water. Most of the water they need comes from the plants they consume. Then we move on to talking about their family life. So breeding season occurs annually in January and February with females giving birth in March and April. Fennec foxes are monogamous and mate for life. And I think that's adorable. I don't know why I find it so adorable when, when animals are monogamous and they, they mate for life. I just, I don't know. Maybe I find it so, I want to call it human-like. I know not all um, uh, humans are monogamous, but you know, I just, I, I like relate to that, I guess. And I just find it so, so cute. Uh, litters consist of two to five kits after a gestation period of about 50 days. Females stay with their kits until they're weaned, uh, after about 60 to 70 days. And the males venture to hunt for food for the family. Like other canids, fennec foxes bark as well as whimper and whine to communicate. Like other canids as well, fennec foxes mark their territory by urinating around the perimeter. So that's just a little bit about our fennec fox friends. Again, I think they're fascinating animals, super, super adorable. We are just about finished with the build now, so we're gonna jump into some cinematic shots. And now's the time you've been waiting for. If you would like to win a code for the Africa Pack DLC for Planet Zoo, just comment down below with the word fox. You can say fox and give me a fun fact. You can just say the word fox. Whatever it is, just as long as the word fox is in your comment, you will be counted to win. If you want to leave a comment and don't want to win the Africa DLC, uh, please just don't use the word fox. I will be picking a winner after 24 hours and the winner will be contacted via the comment section. So do keep an eye out on your comments and replies. I will reply with you have one. I do reply to pretty much everyone, but the winner will specifically say you have one. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun building this one. As always, if you did enjoy, it really severely helps me out leaving a like and a comment down on the video here. And of course, subscribing if you do want to see more, if you're interested in what I'm up to. And as always, I will talk at you guys in the next one. Bye! Oh,